Pulling up Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Hello, Periscope Prophet David Taylor here. So glad to be with you in this uh, first Sunday of the new year. Can't believe that it is uh, 2020 already, man. 2019 just flew by. I remember when we rang 2019 in, and now it's gone, <laughs> and 2020 is here. But praise God for another year. Uh, everybody didn't make it out of 2019. I've already heard about some passings in 2020 already. It's just been five days, but praise God. I'm here. Praise God. You here. <laughs> and when we hear, we always want to hear from the Lord. So as you know, every week I come out and ask the Holy Ghost, uh, what he wants to say through me. Cause if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying nothing. So I'm just very grateful to be with you. Uh, in this new year, I'm very grateful to uh, uh, still be flowing in the prophetic and still, you know, enjoying the presence and the glory of God and, and looking forward to all the good things that God has in store this year. So let's jump right in and hear what the Lord has to say for today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you just thanking you for this day, thanking you for your love and your kindness, thanking you for... Uh, access to your presence by faith. Oh God, I just ask you to breathe through me, breathe on me, breathe through me, speak to me, speak in me, speak through me, oh God. I surrender my entire self to you that you might use me in your glory, oh God. Whatever uh, is going to be said, let it be said to your glory what you want said, oh God, that your people might be edified and encouraged and emboldened to stand more boldly for the right to extend your kingdom in their lives and the lives of others while we still walk to earth. I thank you for it and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, when you come on the video, uh, please like and share, because whenever God releases a prophetic word, that word needs to go worldwide, because it's going to bless some people. Sometimes it actually saves lives. Sometimes people are thinking about ending it all, but when they hear a prophetic word from God, they realize, because remember that preaching is general. Preaching is normally done in crowds, okay? but prophetic words are often very, very personal. Preaching is often God speaking to us, but prophetics is often God speaking to you, okay? So that's why when there's a prophetic word going forth, it needs to be shared. As many people as possible need to hear it because the Spirit of God will find a way, even in the midst of what's being said to people at the same time, the Spirit of God will find a way to speak directly to you, to tune your ears, to tune the ears of your spirit, and open the eyes of your understanding to see what God is saying to you in the midst of a prophetic word. Okay? All right. So today's prophetic word is, uh, you see it in the title. Today's prophetic word is beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Now, those of you that are familiar with the scripture, you know the scripture very well and you know it's also the the scripture that Jesus quotes in his first sermon. For those of you that are not familiar with the scripture, I'm not going to read the whole 61st chapter, even though it's chock full of incredible things. But I'm going to read two verses because the Spirit of God was showing me that this is his message to the saints for the beginning of 2020. Let me say that again. What I'm about to release now, what I'm about to say now, the Spirit of God was showing me that this is his message to the saints for the beginning of 2020, okay? And it blessed my heart when I heard it, and I know it's going to bless your heart when we hear it too. So we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 61. We're actually going to read verse 3, and we're going to read verse 7. Isaiah 61, uh, chapter 61, verses 3, not 3 and 7, not 3 through 7, but 3 and 7, Okay? Because the prophetic word for today, for today is beauty for ashes. Okay? So let's read Isaiah. Now, Isaiah was a major prophet in the Old Testament. Remember, I've told you many times that the difference between a major prophet and a minor prophet was only the size of their books. Okay? When you see the phrase minor prophet, that does not mean that their message wasn't important. That is not what it means to be a minor prophet. It just means that their books were smaller. So most of the people that are labeled minor prophets, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zechariah, Zephaniah, and Malachi, their books are three to five chapters long at best. But major prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah have 60 
plus chapters, plus Jeremiah wrote Jeremiah and Lamentations. Okay, Ezekiel, another major prophet. So when you see that phrase, major prophet, that just means that their books were extremely long. 30, 40, 50, 60 chapters. And minor prophets were three to five chapters, okay? Just for a little background. So Isaiah, Old Testament, major prophet, chapter 61, verse 3. I'm reading out of the Berean, out of the Berean Study Bible. It says, To provide for those who grieve in Zion, to give them a crown of beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise in place of a spirit of despair. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Yes. So what the Lord is saying is that this is his declaration to us. And this is what he wants us to declare over 2020. Now, my pastor, Apostle John Eckhart, uh, has shown us the power of confession. And so he has us make confessions as a con congregation and teaches us how to declare the word of God and what it is that we want to say. Okay. So the Holy Spirit is saying that the declaration that he's making over 2020 for your life is, again, verse 3, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to give them a crown of beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise in place of a spirit of despair. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. So what does all that mean in a practical sense? I'll tell you, okay? So, when it says uh, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, Zion is the holy city. Zion is the city of the people of God. So, when he's talking about anything having to do with Zion, he's talking about believers. So, what he's saying is that if you're a believer, but you're grieving, okay? God never meant for you to come into 2020 grieving, but in case you are, he said he's going to provide something for you for those who grieve in Zion, us believers, now, remember, this is not for unbelievers, so you hear me talk about it all the time, uh, to take full advantage of being a Christian, take full advantage of everything Jesus died to give you. Why would you not want to take full advantage of everything that Jesus died to give you? Okay? So one of the things he's saying is that if you are a believer and you're grieving, especially in this season, he's going to provide for you. Okay? Uh, oh, let me shout out some folks. Stacy's watching. Shout out to Stacey. Zaldi's watching. Shout out to Erica. What's up? Thanks for tuning in uh, on Facebook. Uh, so provide for those who grieve in Zion. So he's going to give you a crown of beauty for ashes. So let me help you understand what that means. There are times in life where no matter what you hold, you're not going to be able to hold it forever. And sometimes it disintegrates right in your hand. That could be talking about dreams. That could be talking about uh, if you've ever lost a loved one. I don't know uh, how much I've told you about when my father died, but when my father died, they called me and I went to the hospital right after my father had passed and I laid my head on his chest and I felt my father's blood stop running. I felt his body turn cold. Okay. Uh, I've also been through a house fire. And if you've ever been through a house fire, everything you own turns to ashes. So this is a literal truth for me. So sometimes if you're holding in your hand what feels like ashes, if it feels like that you've lost everything, that you've lost something, that you uh, thought you had something in your hand, but it's disintegrated, it's disappeared, and it's gone, God says he's going to give you a crown of beauty for those ashes. That means he's going to put a whole new crown on your head and it's going to be beautiful. So that means that anything you feel like you've lost God is going to give you a crown of beauty for that which you lost. Okay? He's also going to give you the oil of joy for mourning. What does that mean? That means exactly what it sounds like. If you're mourning, if you're in grief, if you're in heaviness, instead of that heavy spirit, instead of the grief that you're feeling, instead of that weighted downness, God is going to pour some fresh oil into your spirit. Remember that in the scripture, oil always represents the Holy Ghost. So God is going to pour some fresh oil into your spirit. When you come on the video, please like and share, because prophetic word, we want that to be seen by as many people as possible. So God is going to pour some fresh oil onto your spirit, okay? And then it says, a garment of praise in place of a spirit of despair. 
Now, when you have a spirit of despair, what does that mean? That means that you're heavy. It means that you're bent over. It means that your head is down. It means that your heart is weighed down. It means that you don't have a lot of hope. That's what despair means, is that you don't really see a way out. You don't really see any hope. You really don't see anything better in front of you. But God says he's going to give you a garment of praise. That means you're going to take a coat that's made out of the praises of God, and you're going to wear that. And everywhere you go, you're going to be shouting and praising God. Okay? Then it goes on to say, so they will be, so they will be called oaks of righteousness. You know what that means? What that means is that God is saying he's going to plant you and establish you in his kingdom and in his will this year so strong until you're going to be like an oak tree. You're not going to be like a sapling or a root or a tree that's just springing up. You're going to be like a mighty oak tree with strong roots in the ground and very tall and very thick and strong branches. And so you'll be called oaks of righteousness. Your righteousness is going to be established. It's going to be strong. Okay, you're going to have strong roots in God. And then it says the planting of the Lord. In other words, people will be able to look at your life and say, God did that. They will know that God is the one. Hey, Sister Valerie, God bless you. Uh, God is the one that planted you. God is the one that sets you up where you are. Because remember, all up until this year, the prophetic words were based on Second Chronicles 2020. Believe the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. We are in that day. Okay, if you've been paying attention since last summer, the Holy Spirit has been leading us up to this time. That's why you hear me say it all the time. You've got to stay in sync with what God is doing. You have to stay in step with the Lord. You've got to be faithful. You've got to show up and talk to the Lord every day. You've got to come to the house of God every week. You've got to flow in the prophetic and pray in tongues every day. That kind of thing. So you can be sure you are in step. Remember, that's Jesus' secret. The reason that the Lord was always able to please the Father is because he would get up very early in the morning and spend a lot of time in the Father's presence getting his instructions for the day. That's how Jesus always knew what to do. Because he got those instructions from the Father. Okay? So God is saying that he's going to plant you. You understand what that means? That means that you are going to be strong and established. You're not going to waver. You're not going to be double-minded. You're not going to be easily knocked over. And when people look at you, they, they're going to say, I know that's a man or a woman of God. I know that's a prophet of God. I know that's a Christian. Because you're going to have that crown of beauty, you're going to have that oil of joy, and you're going to have a garment of praise. But it's going to be regular. Okay, my pastor prophesied about that this morning. It's going to be regular. In other words, you may have just gone through a season of ups and downs like that. Or you may have gone through a season where you hit a valley like that. God is saying, that's over. <laughs> and what it's time for now is crowns and oil and garments of praise. That's the way we're supposed to start 2020, okay? And then it says, the planning of the Lord, that he may be glorified. In other words, when we're praising God, when we have joy in our hearts, and when we're beautiful and we have crowns of beauty, that's what glorifies God. So don't be listening to them old, tired religious people that tells you that God putting something on you, or I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain, or all that old negative stuff church people or religious people tend to say. But don't be listening to that. That is not what God is saying. So when the Holy Spirit, pay attention, when the Holy Spirit makes a decree for a new year, that means you're supposed to say it too. Because let me help you understand that whenever God releases something, releases something, you have to catch it. I know that a lot of people still think, which is why I work so hard against genie concept. If you know anything about my teaching on no more genies, I work real hard against genie concept. I know there's a lot of people that believe that if the Lord says something, that that means it's automatically going to happen and you don't have anything to do with it and that you don't have to do anything and that's not true. When the Lord releases something, that means it's available in the spirit. That means he released it in the spirit realm. It's like if you play video games, it's like unlocking a level or like unlocking a costume or unlocking, you know, a power up. It's like God released it in the spirit realm, but where we need it is out here in our lives. I need it in my hand. OK, I'm glad that God spoke from heaven and said, this is what I'm saying, but I needed to show up in my life. How do I make it show up in my life? And the answer to that question is you have to decree it. If God decrees it, that means it's released in the spirit. 
but you have to decree it. And what shocks a lot of Christians is that the devil will sometimes almost immediately come against what the Lord said and try to pull you in another direction. That's a very common tactic of the enemy. Do you know why he does that? Because he does not want to get that word, he does not want to allow that word to get established in your mouth. So he's going to try to confuse you with circumstances. He's going to try to do some okie doke and make you think that what God said isn't true. Because what's the first thing the devil said to Eve? He said, yeah, did God really say, don't eat from every tree in the fruit, every tree in the garden? The first thing the devil said was, did God really say that? That's the first thing he said to Eve. So I stopped by to tell you that if you want to wear this crown of beauty, it's available to you in the spirit, but you have to say it. You got to HBO, you got to hear this word, you got to believe it, and then you have to obey by decree. If you want God to pour the oil of joy in your spirit, that means I don't have to be sad no more. You might have spent all the twenty. I have heard several people say in my hearing that they were glad to see 2019 go. So whatever you went through in 2019, you don't have to start off 2020 being sad, okay? Because God has released the oil of joy in the spirit, but for it to show up in your life, you got to say it. You can't be running around with negative confession, looking back at the past, rehearsing your mistakes, and thinking that's going to produce joy. That is incorrect. It will not. And then it says, a garment of praise in place of a spirit of despair. You don't have to be heavy. You don't have to walk around with your head down. You don't have to walk around with your heart sunk, okay? With your heart just feeling like there's no hope, okay? So remember, you hear me say it all the time. When God releases something, he releases in the spirit, but you have to HBO. You have to hear it. You got to hear this word. You've got to believe it. And then you have to obey by decreeing it. You have to say it because the devil and wicked people are going to come and try and snatch it from you, okay? Why do you think people go to church for 10 and 12 and 15 years and never change? Haven't you ever noticed that? Haven't you ever noticed that I don't care how long or how short you've been in church and I don't care what church you go to, you've noticed there are people that since the time you met them, they're exactly the same. I mean, exactly the same. They ain't changed that much. They've been listening to word after word after word after word, and they're still the same. Do you know why? Because when your pastor, when your prophet, when your apostle is releasing the word of God through sermons, through prophesying, through teachings, that means the Holy Spirit is saying, this is what I'm releasing to you, but you got to catch it. You got to hear it. You got to believe it, and you got to obey it. That's how you get it in your hand. That's how you get it in your life, okay? I've been in situations, because remember, I always tell you, anything I'm preaching and teaching to you, I'm doing it myself. I'm not saying nothing to you that I'm not using. I've been in situations in my life that look bad. I've been in situations in my life that look like a whole lot of trouble was going on. I've been in situations where it looked like, you know, it was going to be a long time to wait for something. And you know what I did? I declared a word. I spoke it. I declared, I told something to move and get out of my way. I declared something, and I broke the power of something I was looking at. And you know what happened? That thing moved. It was like the fig tree that the Lord cursed. It dried up. It moved. I'm telling you. So that's what I mean when I say, if I'm sitting there looking at a problem, and the Lord is saying something to me, I need it out here where I'm living, when I'm going to a restaurant, when I'm going to work, when I'm going to sleep at night, when I'm cleaning my house, when I'm hanging out with my friends, Okay, when I'm going grocery shopping, okay, that's how we live our lives. We live our lives Monday through Saturday. We don't live our lives in church. You know, we spend time in the house of God, but we are living our lives. That's when you need to be applying the word of God because God has released it, but it's not going to do you no good unless you HBO, unless you hear it, believe it, and obey it. That's how you get people that come to church Sunday after Sunday and they stay sick. You ain't supposed to go to church Sunday after Sunday and stay sick. Jesus died so that you don't have to be sick. Did you know that? Or just like being broke, going to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, crying about money. Okay, you don't have to stay broke. You have to obey what the Lord is telling you. If you don't want to obey what the Lord is telling you, then yeah, you're going to stay broke. It's not that the money's not there. It's not that God hasn't released it. You are not hbo -ing. But if you HBO, you can walk in this. And let me show you this next verse and I'll be done. Isaiah 61, 7, same chapter, different verse. 
It says, I'm still in the Berean Study Bible, instead of shame, my people will have a double portion. Good Lord Almighty, a double portion. Instead of humiliation, they will rejoice in their share. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land and everlasting joy will be theirs. Now, let me explain something to you. <laughs> I've done a teaching called 30, 60, 100 fold. It's actually on my Facebook page and it's on my YouTube channel. You should really watch it. In my teaching on 30, 60, 100 fold, I tell you how to get 100 fold. Because many times we have been taught that the 100 fold just happens. That's not true. And a lot of people have been taught if I put in a certain amount of money that I times about 100 and God gonna give me that, is going to give me that money back. But what actually happens is, is that potential is released in the spirit, but you have to know how to harvest it and make the word of God turn over. Okay? Same thing with a good marriage. It doesn't matter if you are married to literally a perfect person, which ain't no perfect people. But if you are married to a perfect person, you're still not going to have a good marriage if you don't know how to build a marriage. God can have released your spouse to you, the person he wants you to spend your days with and build your life with, and you can have absolutely no idea what to do with them and lose them. That's what I keep trying to tell people. We can't have this genie idea of God where God just says a magic word and then your life just gets better and you don't have to do anything. That's not how the kingdom works. So what God is saying here is that instead of shame, if you were ashamed of anything last year, um, the Lord gave me a prophetic word, uh, I believe it was last week, sometime in the last two weeks, I think it was last week, where we were. He, the Holy Spirit was talking about forgiveness and how we needed to forgive ourselves and how some of us are carrying the weight of uh, uh, a fear or shame or humiliation or past mistakes or regrets. Uh, what the word is here, what the word is saying here is that instead of your shame, instead of your shame, you can have a double portion. And instead of humiliation, they will rejoice in their share. So in this context and in your life, you know what that means? And they will inherit a double portion in their land. Each one of these things is talking about land. So in other words, God is saying your life don't have to be empty. You can have something to show for your life. That's what this is saying, that if somebody came by and saw the children of Israel, they didn't have no land, they didn't have no crops, they didn't have no harvest, they didn't have nothing to show for that year. They just standing there empty-handed. That's kind of embarrassing if you're a farmer, if you're, you know, a, a sharecropper, if that's what you do and you don't have nothing to show. So some people might be feeling like they're coming out of 2019 with nothing to show. The word being released right now, so that's why I need you to HBO, you need to hear it. You need to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying. That instead of shame, you don't have to be shamed no more. My people will have a double portion. You know what that means in a practical sense? That every goal you wanted to accomplish in 2020, you can double it. Instead of asking for that raise, you can ask for twice the money you was going to ask for. Instead of that piece of property you were going to buy, you can buy two pieces of property. Instead of having a good relationship, you can have a super good relationship that's twice as good as you thought a relationship could ever be. How, Prophet Taylor, how? How do I get that out of my life? I told you, HBO. Hear the word of God. Hear it as it's coming out of the mouth of the prophet. Hear it in the scripture. That's why I always give a scripture reference so you can read it. So you know that I'm not just pulling stuff out to air. Uh, that, so you can read it for yourself. Believe it. Believe that God is talking to me. And then obey it by decreeing it. You have got to say it. I don't know. I, I don't know how much more I can emphasize that point. If you're walking around with negative stuff in your mouth, it's not going to happen for you. I'm going to say it again. Why you think some people come to church every week for years and don't change and still complaining about the same thing, still thinking that they need a demon cast out. All that stuff is not demons. Some of that stuff is you refusing to grow and change. You refusing to hear what God is telling you because the word of God being released makes it true in the spirit realm. But I need it in my life. That means I have to add some faith. It's not going to happen for me unless I believe it. Then I have to say it. So, so whatever you're ashamed of for 2019, let's look at uh, what the word says. I can have a double portion. So like the last verse said that maybe I had ashes. So if I'm ashamed of something, God said, you can put twice that much what you lost back in your hand. 
Think about it. Did you lose some money? Think about putting twice the amount back in your hand. Okay? He says, instead of humiliation, you can rejoice in their share. You know what that means? That means you can look at your life and be satisfied. That means when I look at my life, when I look at my blessings, my soul cries out, hallelujah, and gives thanks to God. When I say, thank you, Lord, for all, when you just look around at your life, that's what your life is supposed to look like when you're a believer. Okay? I had that experience on New Year's. I was with my family, and we had a lot of food, and it was good food. And we had a lot of fun, and we had a lot of fellowship, and there were many generations of my family there. Older members, middle-aged members, young people, children, and newborns, babies. And I said, thank you, Lord, because everybody don't get that. Everybody don't get to be around multi-generations of their family. Everybody don't get to be around a whole bunch of good food, because everybody in my family can cook. Even the people that married in my family can cook. So that's a blessing. That's what I mean when I say I rejoiced in my share. I said, thank you, God, you made it possible for me to have a family, for me to have uh, uh, places to go, for me to eat well, for me to be around my kinfolk, and we all ate in peace and love and joy, and it was great. It was great. That's what I'm saying, because y'all know some folks, you can't even go around your family. You can't. <laughs> if it's the holidays, you're like, well, I'm going with my husband's family, or I'm going with my wife's family. You can't even go around your folks, but I praise God, I can go around my folks, and we had a good time. I rejoiced in my share. And then it says they will inherit a double portion in their land and everlasting joy will be theirs. Why did the Lord say everlasting? He said you don't have to be sad no more. That means the perfect will of God is the life that brings you the most joy. That's why Jesus said uh, when he did the will of the Father, he had so much joy, sometimes he didn't forget to eat. The only time we forget to eat is when we're so happy we forget about being hungry. Think about it. Think about something that you do that makes you so happy that you forget about time passing. You look up and it's like three, four, five, six hours. God is saying you can live like that. You can live your dream life. God's perfect will is your dream life. So that's why he tells us we have to crucify whatever we thought and make our will line up with his perfect will. And when you see what it is God wants you to do with your life, that will be better than anything you could have ever dreamed up. God's perfect will will be your perfect dream life. And he says everlasting joy. That means you don't have to be sad no more. You can look at you, you can be living the life that you want and be happy. You can wake up every day and say, this was the life I wanted to live. See what I mean? All of this is what the Holy Spirit has given us for 2020. All of this is what the Holy Spirit is releasing at the beginning of the year. So I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, and I beseech you by the mercies of God to HBO. Hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hear the words coming out of my mouth, out of the mouth of the prophet. Believe and obey and decree. Decree this. So when you come up into a situation, you might come into a situation today before Sunday's out. Say, I'm not supposed to be grieving. I claim my crown of beauty. Whatever you're looking at looks like ashes. Say, I got a crown of beauty on my head. And you have to keep saying it. It says, I have the oil of joy. I don't have to mourn. I have a garment of praise and just start praising God. Just start praising God right where you are and watch what happens. And then say, uh, when you go to work tomorrow, you might be working today. Say, instead of shame, I'm supposed to have a double portion. I challenge you that when you go to your job tomorrow, before you start working, to say, Isaiah uh, 61, 7, instead of shame, I have a double portion. Watch what happens to your day. Watch what happens if you are not twice as productive. Watch. You'll see. By the time you quit working tomorrow, if you say that before you start, you won't believe the productivity you will experience because you declared the double portion of God over your day. But you've got to say it. It's not going to happen for you if you don't say it. Okay? And uh, rejoicing in your share and hear a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be theirs. Start saying that. Start saying that this year is my dream life year. I always wanted to go back to school. That's happening this year. I always wanted to get in the right relationship. That's happening this year. I always wanted to increase my finances so I had, enough, I had enough money to live my dream. That's happening this year. Okay? Now, I'm trying to help you understand the difference between Christians that get the promise and Christians that don't. You got to listen to what the Lord is saying, but when the Lord releases it, that means it's there in the spirit realm. Is there, but Christians that, that grab it and believe it 
and confess it are going to see it manifest in their life. And Christians that have no faith, that don't mix their faith with the word and don't confess, they're going to ring in 2021 if they live to see it the same way they rang in this year, same way. See that? Because once again, I'm always working to get you out of genie concept. Stop thinking that when you hear somebody say God says something, that that means you don't have to do anything. Stop that. Stop thinking that when you hear a decree from the Holy Spirit, that that's the end of the equation. Stop that. You must, HBO, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Believe what the Spirit of God is saying. Then start saying it yourself. Then you'll see it show up. Okay? All right. I'm super excited about that. Um, th this is the first Sunday of 2020. That means that the Holy Spirit is starting off the year saying that. That means that I need to now take my confession and pull that into my life. All these crowns, all this oil, garments of praise, no more shame, double portion, rejoicing in my share. So you best believe that's why I'm going to start confessing because that's what the Holy Ghost said. That's why I tell you all the time. I'm living what I'm saying. I'm not just running my mouth. Okay. All right, so I'm super excited. I hope you're excited too because you can see a difference in less than 24 hours. So don't be believing this. Well, you know, by September, <laughs> 24 hour time is it? It's three o'clock Central Standard Time on Sunday. By this time on Monday, if you say these words and believe them, you will see the manifestation, manifestation begin to happen. Okay, guaranteed. How do I know it's guaranteed? Because I've done it. When the Lord releases a fresh word and tells you to grab it, if you grab it right away, you can see it right away. It's the most amazing thing. Okay? All right. If you have, so that's our prophetic word for today. If you have any prayer requests, please put them on the screen. Now, you know, at the end uh, of my broadcast, I always pray in tongues and ask the Lord, is there any more prophetic words? Are there any financial revelations? Is there any deliverance? Is there anything that needs to be cast out? And um, is there any physical healing? Okay? So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. I'm going to close my eyes for a minute and pray in tongues and see what the Holy Spirit is saying along those four lines I just told you. Okay? Here we go. Okay. I'm going to tell you what I just saw in the Spirit. I saw two things. I saw green trees and I saw a brain. I saw green trees and I saw the frontal lobes of a brain. So um, uh, I can, um, I have a, a gift of anointing for dream interpretation. So I know what that means. What that means is that God is saying that there's, there's flourishing, there's life. That's also not the first time I heard the color green. I've heard several prophets say they saw green for 2020. That means there's flourishing, there's life. In the future, that means there's life ahead of you, in front of you, with you right now. But it also means that you can have life in your brain. Uh, I talked to somebody today, today whose relative had had an aneurysm. It means that health and healing can come in your brain, your physical, literal brain right now. You can recover from a stroke. You can recover from an aneurysm. You can recover from memory loss. That's what that means. That life and flourishment can come right there. And it also means we need to eat from the ground. <laughs> OK, we need to eat healthy. We need to eat organic because when we eat, I know, I know you didn't get all that out of it. When, when we eat green things, it helps our circulation and it helps us think. That's what that means. OK, so that's somebody's prophetic word. Now, I just bought me once again. I'm living what I'm saying. I just bought me some spinach like two days ago. <laughs> so, so I'm doing it. I just bought me some frozen spinach and microwave and I'm going to hook it up. So anyway, so once again, I'm just telling you I'm doing it. I'm not just running my mouth. So that means that if we eat organically and eat from the ground and get that good food, it'll help your circulation. It'll help your thoughts. It'll help bring, bring healing to a broken brain. You see that? Mm, good God Almighty. So let me ask the Holy Ghost if there's anything else. All right. Amen and amen. I think that's it. All right. So now I am on uh, every Sunday, this time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, I also have a program I do on the second Thursday, which is this Thursday coming up, uh, called No More Genies. Sally, I eat spinach, collard, kale. That's right. 
called No More Genies. That's where I go into talking about genie concept, like you saw me do a little bit here, about how we need to throw out the wrong concept of God and get ourselves full of what the Word actually says. That's coming up this Thursday. That's the second Thursday of every month I do that program at 7 p.m. on the second Thursday. So that's coming up this week. This week is the second Thursday because the year came in on a Wednesday, so that's coming up on the 9th. That's this Thursday. So tune in at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, and I'll do another installment of No More Genies, where we're getting rid of our magic concept of faith and our magic concept of God, and we get into what the Word actually says so we can start to get the results. Okay? Uh, so I'm here every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm here on the second Thursday. I'm on Facebook Live. I'm on Periscope. And then the replay is on YouTube. Okay? So if you want to sow into my ministry, um, I put that um, link on my Facebook Live and on my YouTube because I have a Zelle. It's a Zelle. It's prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com. So if you want to sow into my ministry, bless me financially. I actually have a lot of projects that I'm doing. So, um, so definitely the finances will help me give birth to some more of the stuff that I, I want to do. So if you want to sow into my ministry, that's my Zell is prophet David Taylor at gmail.com. And I put that on Facebook and YouTube and I probably should start putting it on Twitter. Maybe I'll put it on my Twitter link because my Periscope auto posts to my Twitter. So it's on my Twitter account as well. So, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and share the video. When you comment, thank you so much for those of you that commented. When you commented and like and share the video, it raises us up in Facebook's algorithm so more people can see it. Because whenever the Holy Spirit releases a prophetic word, we want that to go around the world. We want as many people as possible to see that so they can receive the blessing from it. Okay? And you hear me say it every week. I I just count it as a blessing to, to be in the prophetic. Uh, the prophetic is wonderful. It's part of God's fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. God gave us five-fold office ministry gifts, and I just count it as a privilege because God does not need me. God don't need me for nothing, okay? And I, I say that to let you know that I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful to be used by Heavenly Father, to be used by Jesus Christ, to be used by the Holy Spirit because it's such an honor. And I also say that because I want to encourage you to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit for your ministry. Because I know many times when God calls us, it's like Gideon or Moses. God says something to you and you don't even believe he's talking to you. God says something to you and you, you realize you don't even see yourself that way. God calls you a mighty man or a mighty woman of valor and you're like, is he talking to me? God told Moses to go down there and stick his finger in Pharaoh's face and deliver the people. And Moses was like, are you talking to me? So I say that to say that many of us go through that. I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to surrender to the call of God. Agree with God. If the Lord says you're an apostle, be an apostle. If the Lord says you're a pastor, be a pastor. Whatever God says to you, okay? But surrender to that calling. Listen to that voice. Because it's the greatest adventure you could ever go on. And it's the greatest honor to be a part of his kingdom and be a part of his program. Because it could be so different, okay? Because he's using us to extend his kingdom while we live. And if we are faithful to him until we die, he's going to give us crowns of life. The flip is also true, that if you don't want to have nothing to do with God in this life, in the afterlife, he ain't going to want to have nothing to do with you. Oh, oh, I don't want to be in that crowd. The depart from me, I don't want to be in that crowd. I don't want that. I don't want to be in that crowd. I want, when Jesus sees me, I want him to say, oh, David, <laughs> well done. Come on in. That's what I want. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I want that for everyone that listens to me as well. All right. God bless you. That's it for this week. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Have a good meal. Watch some football. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Hang out with your family. Um, Sally said, I've been hearing various callings. Um, then, well, hold on. Let me see, Sally. Okay, Sally. God says for you, double E's, entrepreneurship. And evangelism. Sally Butler. Entrepreneurship and evangelism. Remember, this is a year of double portion. So God just gave you two E's. Build a business and be a soul winner and build a kingdom. Okay? All right. Amen, amen. All right. Again, God bless you. Thank you so much. So I will see uh, you this Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m. for No More Genies. And I will see you next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time 
for my weekly prophetic word. And remember, you can always watch this during the week on Facebook Live, Periscope, my Twitter, or my YouTube, Prophet David Taylor, or just look up hashtag PDT. That's the way to find me online. All right? Amen, and God bless. Talk to you soon.